Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous videos, we talked about Bacillus anthracis and Bacillus cereus. Today, let's turn our attention to Listeria monocytogenes, granulomatosis infantiseptica, flu-like symptoms, and gastroenteritis. After consuming raw unpasteurized milk, soft cheese, meat, and vegetables if they are raw and unwashed, especially cabbage and lettuce. In the words of Gordon Ramsay, hey, big boy, it's raw. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. As for the gram-positive cocci, refer to previous videos, because today we're talking about a gram-positive rod. Is listeria spore-forming? No. Listeria is non-spore-forming. Is listeria aerobic or anaerobic? aerobic and as we'll see today could be facultative anaerobic as well because we can classify bacteria into three categories aerobic strictly anaerobic and facultative anaerobic so listeria could be aerobic or facultative anaerobic both listeria and erysipelothrix are gram positive rods non-spore forming aerobic with uniform shape you know what erysipelo means does anyone remember erysipelas, the disease caused by Streptococcus pyogenes? Eri means red. Pella means skin. Oh, so this is a bacteria that's going to cause some skin infection. Genius. Why the flip did we call it Listeria monocytogenes? Listeria, it's named after the famous Joseph Lister. Also, the famous Listerine mouthwash is named after Joseph Lister. Did you know that? Yeah, you, the freaking dentist. Dang, humanity is in trouble. Monocytogenes because listeriosis as a disease causes proliferation of monocytes or monocytosis in rabbits. So listeria, which is today's topic, is a gram-positive rod, non-spore forming, aerobic, uniform shape. Gram-positive rod, the rods are short, could be singular? In pairs or in short chains? Oh, I've heard this before. Hmm, where did I hear this? With streptococcus pneumonia and with enterococcus. That's why it's very important to differentiate between enterococcus and streptococcus pneumonia. Please refer to my past videos on the difference between them. Watch the videos on enterococcus to find out. And you need to differentiate between listeria and streptococcus pneumonia. Why? Because both of them cause meningitis, and both of them are gram-positive, and both of them could be singular pairs or short chains. Does listeria make spores? Nope. Does it branch? Nope. Do I look like a nocardia to you? Do I look like actinomyces to you? No, that's right. I am non-branching. I could be aerobic. I could be facultative anaerobic. I'm also facultative intracellular. So you have two facultatives. But look at this. I can grow in high concentration of salt. So salt is not going to kill me. I.e. if you decided to eat raw cabbage that is not washed and you added salt, I don't care. I still can grow. But hey, Listeria, I'm going to put that cabbage in the refrigerator. I don't care because I can grow at cold temperatures. See who is the real doofus? That's why listeriosis, when it happens, is usually in a picnic or restaurant. Why? Because they put the lettuce and the cabbage and the vegetables in the refrigerator for a long period of time. But we have strong refrigeration system. Yes, indeed, that's the whole point. Listeria loves you because you kept listeria at a comfortable temperature for a long period of time, giving listeria enough time to divide and replicate and proliferate. So, listeria, you have the microphone. Talk about yourself. I can grow in the refrigerator. I can grow at room temperature. Oh, by the way, I'm also motile at room temperature. If you look at my motility, how I move, it's end over end tumbling motility. They love to ask about this on the exam. The bacteria is shaking its tail, so to speak. Old jokes aside, you can watch some really good videos about the tumbling motility of listeria on YouTube. Learning is fun, or you can watch your professor's PowerPoint. God help you. When listeria causes gastroenteritis and flu-like illness, why is that? Usually ingestion of raw unpasteurized milk, raw unpasteurized soft cheese, undercooked meat, because remember, 
still listeria can survive here so you gotta really cook the food well to get rid of listeria and raw unwashed vegetables especially cabbage and lettuce if your main hobby in life is to read about recent outbreaks food outbreaks are mostly e coli salmonella listeria of course it depends on the circumstances what region of the world you live in etc etc but these are very as for hemolysis on the agar listeria is weakly beta hemolytic all of these are the characteristics of listeria now to the diseases adults will have flu-like illness plus or minus gastroenteritis nausea vomiting diarrhea etc pregnant women flu-like illness neonates this is very high yield granulomatosis infantoseptica which can lead to miscarriages disseminated abscesses and granulomas all over the baby's body granulomatosis infantoseptica sepsis meningitis death pathobiology of listeria monocytogenes aka how listeria hacks your own cells when the bacteria listeria monocytogenes gets exposed to your gastric acid proteolytic enzymes or bile salts the bacteria will respond through their stress response genes and they will start adhering to your own cell how come Listeria has a protein known as internalin A, which interacts with your cells acadherin. So acadherin from you will interact with internalin A from the bacteria Listeria monocytogenes, and then the bacteria will enter into your cell. But wait, your phagosome will attack the bacteria and engulf it. Now we have lysosome next to the phagosome. They combine together. You have a phagolysosome but the bacteria is very sneaky. The bacteria will take advantage of the fact that your intracellular compartment is naturally more acidic than the extracellular, which makes sense because the metabolism happens inside the cell and metabolism secretes acids like pyruvic acid, lactic acid, phosphoric acid, uric acid, you name it. This acidity in your own cell will activate two doofuses. The first one, is listerolysin O, which is nothing but a cytolysin, which causes lysis of your cell. How is that? By making pores into your cellular structures. The second doofus is phospholipase C. Phospholipase is an enzyme that breaks down phospholipids. And where do you have phospholipids? In your membranes, including your cell membranes and the membranes of your organelles. Oh, including my phagolysosome? Yes, indeed. So the bacteria will escape from your prison, your phagolysosome, and now listeria will be released to float freely in your cytosol. Listeria keeps moving and moving and swimming using its tumbling motility in your cell, thanks to Act A, which assembles your actin. And as you know, actin is part of the cytoskeleton, the tram track system in your cell the trafficking system and if this was not enough listeria can decide to leave one cell and go to the next cell so the pathogenesis of listeria is three parts number one lysis of your phagolysosome thanks to phospholipase c number two replication of listeria thanks to its own genetic material and the directional movement whether in one cell or between two different cells thanks to Act A, which assembles actin, sometimes called actin rockets, and this process is regulated by PRFA, which stands for positive regulatory factor gene, which regulates the directional movement of listeria, the bacteria, inside your cell. That was the best discussion of listeria characteristics on the face of the planet. In the next video, we'll talk about the diseases caused by listeria, aka listeriosis. Osis means condition of listeria. How do we treat listeriosis, ampicillin, gentamicin? You can learn about all of these antibiotics by downloading my antibiotics course on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. It comes with 40 videos, questions and answers, cases and answers, my perfectionist ultimate notebook, and a mind map to help you memorize these doozy antibiotics. Moreover, I have a surgery high yields course on the same website and an emergency medicine high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense.